here is my cord wrap that uses two filament spools as its base. I'm going to take this one apart and show you its features and how you can put one together. I knew I wanted a cord wrap that you utilized two of these spools, but I wanted it to be designed in a way that it didn't use a lot of filament to achieve that because it doesn't make a lot of sense to print a spool's worth of filament to make parts to use an empty spool. So this is what I came up with, was a side plate that could be printed on one piece on my Prusa Mark III that would just snap into the ledges and the edges of the spools themselves. So my initial version was built around these Prusa Mint spools but I'll show you a little bit later. I also made one for the more generic style as well. So here's how you assemble it. These spools have a little key, and I'm guessing that's molded in here for spooling up the filament at the factory. We're just going to align those two somewhat. And then I built a little key into one of these side plates that can index into that. And so the idea is that this just kind of snaps to the spool itself. And then the same thing on this side, as long as you get the key indexed. And then this other side just doesn't have those keys, so it just snaps on. And so that's kind of version one. And that's good enough for wrapping like uh, Christmas lights or twine or something that's maybe just going to go into storage. But for something you're going to handle like extension cords or rope or something like that, these will pop off like the it won't stay in there so that's where these um, barrel screws or barrel bolts or whatever you want to come call them comes into play so in this case the orange one's the nut and the purple one is the screw and they just thread into one another and the nice thing about that is the diameter of this matches this hole so it index itself but it doesn't use a lot of material because it's hollow so kind of keeping with the same theme of, of uh, not using too much filament to make this happen. But anyways, once you screw this down, then it becomes a lot more rigid. And if you tighten it down with these wrenches that fit in the internal hex, you can really get a good clamp and this becomes a lot more stout. But to make it even more functional, I designed this handle and it just uses the same bolts. They kind of thread through like that. It's got a nice beefy grip so it doesn't hurt your hand when you're wrapping a cord. And then when you put that on, then it turns into a very functional cord wrap for big extension cords and all kinds of stuff. So I'll put this together and then I'll show you some other features. So like I said, if you use these wrenches to tighten these bolts down, you can get them very snug. And this thing becomes very rigid with the addition of this handle and just kind of utilizing the spools themselves to give this rigidity. So next come these little clips and they just clip into this little internal hex on the screw, screw or bolt or whatever you want to call it. And I made a couple different versions and a couple different diameters for different cord sizes. And so there's a single one or a double one, depending on whether or not the cord is going to end up on the same end. And then you can just uh, snap these in here. Sometimes they're a little snug, but they usually go in. And if they don't, you can use something like the edge of this wrench to kind of help it in there. And then you probably want to even loosen this off or twisted I should say or something so that those are orientated so that the cord can snap into them all right and then I can wrap the cord on there we'll speed this part up but you'll see how the handle becomes pretty handy when you go to wrap this
And there we go. Nice way to carry around your extension cords. Now, this has another little feature. Because this internal hex has a little bit of a lip on the inside, if you orientate this so that the, you know, the point is pointing up, then you can use it to hang it on a screw on the wall. So it makes it a nice way to mount it. Let me show you what that looks like. So I got this screw on the wall. I just take my thing, rotate that screw, and it just hangs there nicely. So I like that. For the generic spools, I did away with the clip-on version. It just, most of them don't have the internal option to clip to. And if I get away with that, I can actually bring them a little bit closer, which is nice because I kind of want a bigger diameter um, bolt so that it registers more closely with the inner diameter of those. And so it just goes together very similar to the other one. The only difference is these side plates don't snap on and the... Uh, the holes are a little bigger, so you might want to increase the thickness of this um, to accommodate for that. It's kind of tough because I was I'm getting to the edge of where my printer can print right here, so I don't end up with a lot of meat at this diameter. So it's a little less ideal, but still works out. Um, I found I was printing these with bigger nozzles, and what I found is that uh, I would get where the seam was, I'd get some stuff on the inside. So before you try to assemble them, try and screw these together by hand and they'll be tight. But once you kind of get them worked in, then they then they thread nice. But it, it can be tight the first time you put them together. So just kind of try and work, work the threads before you go to assemble it because it'll be easier that way. But yeah. That's the basic idea. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you do differently. Feel free to modify your these designs as you as you want. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.